We are the paradoxical ape. Bipedal, naked, large-brained. Long the master of fire, tools, and language, but still trying to understand ourselves. Aware that death is inevitable, yet filled with optimism. We grow up slowly. We hand down knowledge. We empathize and deceive. We shape the future from our shared understanding of the past. Carta brings together experts from diverse disciplines to exchange insights on who we are and how we got here. An exploration made possible by the generosity of humans like you. everyone and welcome to a session on explaining the origins of humans or anthropogeny which is the topic of today's talks. When we go to think about the origin of humans there are multiple questions that we can ask. Who are we? What are we doing here? Where did we come from? How did we get here? And where are we going? Now, there are only a couple of these questions that have been dealt with traditionally. Where did we come from and how did we get here? And those are incredibly important questions that we do look at within anthropogeny. But our group is trying to include many other things the humanities and social sciences that might tell us who we are, the biological sciences, biomedical sciences, which probably will help us to understand how we got here, especially metabolically and molecularly, the engineering and computer sciences, the physical and chemical sciences, what are the basics of what we are, and so what we are trying to do as a group is to combine input from all of those scholastic areas. And this is CARTA, the Center for Academic Research and Training in Anthropogeny. Today we have three co-directors, Ajit Varki, who's in the medical school, Fred Gage, Rusty Gage, who is over in the Salk Research Institute, and myself, Margaret Schoeninger, who is formerly from the Department of Anthropology at UCSD. And I see the future as being shown by the combination that Pascal Gagnon, our present associate director, represents, who's also from the medical school and also from anthropology. I want to thank our major supporters, Annette Merle Smith, Nissi and Ajit Varki, and anonymous individuals. I also want to extend special thanks to CARTA's benefactors and patrons. And you can see a list here with Rita and Richard Atkinson, the Codley Institute for Mind and Brain, with whom we co-partner at times, Kurt Bernischka, Bill Calvin, Catherine Grobar, Donald and Natalie Handelman, and Elizabeth Lancaster and Eli Sheffer, and the Primate Foundation of Arizona, and the Paul G. Allen Frontiers Group. We also would like to thank individuals from staff who help with the closed captioning, including Ingrid Vernishka Perkins and her husband Gordon Perkins and Kathleen Fur. With lasting gratitude, we thank our founding sponsors, Philila and Harold Mathers Charitable Foundation of New York. 
You too can help us continue our work by being a contributor that ensures Cardis Symposia for the future. And there's information on how to do that. So special thanks to the CARTA staff who make this possible, Lindsay Hunter, Kate Kaya, Vishu, Nagaman, Linda Nelson, and Jesse Roby, and UCSD TV members, Matt Alioto, Marcy Bretz, Rich Wargo, the science producer, and Mike Weber. And now we begin on the next investigation of what tells us something about the origin of humans which is on the evolution of human physical activity. I thank you for joining us, and I really hope you enjoy the program. And also enjoy Jesse Roby's beautiful artwork, which illustrates human physical activity. Welcome and enjoy. Greetings. My name is Dan Lieberman, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this CARTA Symposium on the Evolution of Physical Activity. The symposium has been many years in the making, but Tatum Simonson and I, the two co-chairs, are excited it finally came together despite the pandemic causing delays and forcing us to be online. When people think about human evolution, they often focus on our species' large brains, complex behaviors like language and social and pro-social cooperation. To many, human evolution is a triumph of brains over brawn. But this view is limited because until recently, humans, no matter how smart and cooperative they were, had to engage in a wide range of key physical activities to survive and thrive. In fact, as we will discuss, hominins have undergone intense selection to be extraordinary athletes. In addition to walking long distances, we had to sometimes sprint short distances or run long distances, climb, dig, carry things, throw, fight, and more. To make these and other physical activities possible, there was selection not just on our musculoskeletal systems, but also on metabolism, thermoregulation, the nervous system, reproduction, respiration, circulation, and more. Hence this symposium in which we have brought together a diverse group of leading researchers who work on a range of physical activities, walking, running, climbing, and fighting, and a range of systems, metabolism, thermoregulation, reproduction, cardiovascular and respiratory systems, and in a variety of environments. These are worth studying not only to help understand how and why humans are the way we are, but also because they have important clinical re relevance. As everyone knows, in the last few generations, humans have increasingly used machines to do our work for us, and the result is a growing epidemic of physical inactivity that has substantially increased our vulnerability to a wide range of mental and physical health problems, including heart disease, metabolic syndrome, many cancers, Alzheimer's, depression, and yes, COVID, to name a few. So we hope this symposium will be interesting, inspiring, and also useful. <laughs> 